Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. Yes, that is not the blue wall of home. It is the window into soul, the window into my soul. I don't know how I would say it other than that soul. Um, yes, I'm here in South Korea, coming towards, well, we're just past the halfway mark now in the tour. Um, I've got to apologise straight off because just underneath my hotel window there is a train line to the nearest metro. So once in a while you will hear a train rattling by. The cargo ones especially are the, are the noisiest. Um, but yeah, thought I'd give you a backdrop. And also I think the light balance probably makes my face... Uh, <laughs> I think you can probably see the window better than my face which is probably a good thing. So yeah, I'm out here in Korea. It's been very cool so far. Um, not the weather. The weather's been pretty warm, uh, mixed in with a few kind of... Actually, no, to be fair, we only had yesterday was a bit of a monsoon rain day. Uh, all the other days have been pretty warm. Um, yeah, it's it's an incredible city. It's like a real clash of modern and old school stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it's... It's been a, a mad one. This tour is probably the busiest tour I've done. This is my fourth now, fourth summer tour, and this has definitely been the most manic tour in terms of Spurs events and places to go. And the time difference is interesting as well because I'm eight hours ahead of you guys in the UK right now. So it for me, you know, we're heading towards our night time. Uh, still got a little bit of light left. Um, what is it? It's about half past five. So yeah, a couple of hours left of light. Um, and yeah, Spurs have been very busy. Lots of appearances for players. Uh, obviously had press conference. We've had open training. We've had the match. Um, the people here are so lovely. They're so awesome. They're so friendly and hospitable and I just try and make to do everything to kind of I suppose make you feel at ease that's probably one of those cargo trains if you can hear it in the background I don't know um yeah they've been lovely you may have seen a couple of photos doing the rounds of social media yes there was a very surreal experience for me um when I've been kind of going back and forth I'm not in the same hotel as the Spurs players that that's a very fancy Spurs a uh, very fancy hotel um, but what's happened out there, and they often, this is the way on the tours, is that there's kind of um, barricaded off areas where fans will wait. And if the players come out, they might come and take a photo and do um, autographs and stuff like that. So when I went there the other night, there were a load of fans um, in one of the areas, Spurs fans. And they all started, or a lot of them started shouting, gold, gold, because they weren't singing the, the old song. But yeah, they were actually trying to get my attention. They, they, if you're wondering, they won't be rude or anything. That they obviously in South Korea they turn the names around. It, it's said in a different way, so I'm Gold rather than Alistair to them, which took me a little bit of getting used to on social media at first. I thought they were just being, uh, yeah, uh, not as polite as they clearly were. So yeah, the reason they were shouting my name, and again, I probably wasn't aware of this at all, is that Sung Mo Lee is a very nice, uh, very well-respected journalist from South Korea who's covered Son for years in the Premier League. He's been um, taking these videos and essentially, I suppose, translating them for the Korean audience. So without me really realising, I've kind of been building up a little bit of a, an audience here in Korea. So any, or a lot of the Korean fans who are also Spurs fans, appear to know me which created this very surreal experience uh, the other night when I went to Spurs Hotel of being called over and essentially living the life of what it must be like for a Premier League player just for a fraction like, or for a couple of minutes um, because I was having to do lots of selfies and sign shirts, which is something I never thought I'd do in my life. And yes, I absolutely do not deserve such kind of moment to happen. It was very strange. Uh, very cool, very nice, very nice. Just got to live like a celebrity just for a moment or two, um, which was, uh, yeah, <laughs> which was very weird, but they're all very pleasant. And I actually had the most, the bizarre kind of uh, experience of there were so many people trying to do it that security had to stop it. It's so weird, honestly. It's like you kind of 
I'm so not some pop star or anyone like that. I'm literally a journalist who chats about Tottenham on my sofa, which I'm now doing a sofa in a hotel room. So, yeah, it was very weird. And, yes, all the other journalists who were actually behind me trying to get into the hotel were all taking the mickey out of me because, quite rightly so, because it really shouldn't happen to a journalist. It really shouldn't. Um, but, yes, so that happened. Um, and they seem to have... Um, uh, developed a fascination with what I eat over here because Sung Mo, who's kind of essentially been my guide on this tour, has been deliberately taking me to places where I will always eat Korean food. So I haven't actually eaten any Western food yet. I arrived on Sunday, uh, yeah, Sunday kind of morning y lunchtime, and I haven't actually eaten anything that we would describe as normal food over in the UK. I've been trying everything that's been a Korean speciality, which to be fair, it's the right way to do it, and there's been some lovely stuff. Um, they like their, they like the spice. The Koreans. There's a few things. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of spicy food, so I've been trying to get somewhere to give me the bits that aren't spicy. Uh, and everything I've had has been absolutely phenomenal. Did a Korean barbecue stuff. Uh, God, what was that last night? Was it last night? Honestly, it's been so chaotic. I can't even keep up with with what we've been doing. Um, but that was superb. Everything's been lovely. Um, I've only literally have learned one word in Korean, which is Gamsa Habnida, which is thank you, uh, which every time I use, Sungmo laughs at me. He finds it hilarious that I am attempting to speak their language. Uh, I just wish I could say more. Another cargo train rolling by underneath. Um, if anything, I've been so busy with the Spurs stuff, I probably haven't been able to see as much of the city as I'd actually like. I've got a bit of a freer morning uh, tomorrow which obviously be in the middle of the night for you guys. Um, and I'm hoping to finally get out and, and just just for a couple of hours, just have a proper look around. Some of showing me some of the kind of main tours when we've been going off to get dinner, but obviously at night it's a bit different. Um, it's just so cool. As you can see behind me, it's like a, a clash sometimes of city and greenery as a park behind me. Um, at the other side of town um, where we were the other night, you just suddenly come across uh, a palace gate where there used to be the King's Palace with a mountain behind it. It's so, such an incredible clash of everything going on. And um, yeah, amazing place, honestly. Visit if if you can. Um, I was I was going to do a travel vlog of some time. I just don't think I'm going to get the time to actually do that sort of stuff here because uh, it's so mad. Um, we've had really, really good access to players, which has been fantastic. I'm trying to think of who we've spoken to. So far, we've interviewed... Obviously, Antonio Conte we had a couple of press conferences with him. Sonny, of course. Eric Dyer, Troy Parrott, Jaffet Tenganga, Matt Doherty, Pierre Melhoibia briefly. Uh, Lucas Moura we had today. That's a really good interview that I think might be going out tomorrow. Uh, Ledley King had a really good sit-down chat with him as well. There's more tomorrow. There's Kane, Sessegnon tomorrow. Um, Conte Presser with Lloris tomorrow. Um, hopefully we should have got around the bulk of the squad by the time um, we kind of head back to to the UK. Um, it's just, tours a very different way of doing things. Um, it's so much more, I guess, laid back. I mean, let's say, for instance, today, um, went to interview Lucas at the team hotel. And normally we do these at events, but once in a while we'll uh, be able to go to the hotel and just have a little chat with them. Because um, I think Spurs have, I don't think so, it might even be the whole floor they've got at uh, this hotel, but it's certainly a big old portion of it if it's not the whole floor. So, yeah, so we went there today to see Lucas, and as you're going up in the elevator, the elevator doors open, and you know, it was Eric Dyer, Matt Doherty, uh, Ben Davies, and Pape Matasar all standing there waiting to get in the elevator. It's a very surreal experience. I was so, you know what, I even had a daydream earlier in the day that. Wouldn't it be weird if you went to the team hotel and you saw Matt Doherty in the lift? You could rate his beard. Um, if, you, if you're not aware of what that is on social, um, the players on the plane all decided to rate Matt Doherty's little goatee that he's got now. Um, I don't know whether he would have liked that or thought I was uh, an absolute plonker had I done that. And as it was, I was so like, oh, it was the Spurs players. I actually completely forgot to say it anyway. It probably would have been really weird in the company as well that I was in with a, a mix of other journalists and obviously these four Spurs players. But uh, yeah, it's a really, like I say, more laid back atmosphere. Conte is in a very happy mood, which is helping everything. It's like... It really feels like the opposite. To, but last tour was 2019, Singapore, Shanghai. And um, 
Poch was in, he was just wasn't in the greatest mood. It was came just a couple of months after the Champions League final defeat. He hadn't had the transfer window he wanted. You know, he'd um, wanted loads of players in, much like this summer for Conte, but he didn't get it. He got Tongi came in and Jack Clark, who obviously went back to Leeds. So he was in a bit of a, I'd say a foul mood. He was difficult in press conferences. Um, we did have one nice evening I think when he um, I remember when he came down to the bar we were in in the hotel and um, had a chat with us all uh, for a good probably 20-30 minutes and then we later found out he put everything on his tab which was really nice of him um, but other than that yeah he wasn't in the greatest of spirits so this feels like the complete opposite Conte has just been in a cracking mood like He'll come into the press conferences and he's walking out of them. He's like, hey, like that to us in the corner because he recognises our faces. It's been um, it's been nice. It's been a nice atmosphere. All the players are in good spirits when you talk to them. They're knackered. They are absolutely knackered from the training, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but otherwise, they're all really excited. It's just an excited feeling about what's about to happen this season. Um, everyone is really looking forward and they're all desperate to win their place in this Conte team because I think... They all know what's happening. They they feel like silverware is on its way, um, which for Tottenham, you know, that's a rare thing nowadays. So, yeah, hopefully Conte can harness this energy because um, it's a good one. And he is certainly putting them through their paces. I mentioned that training. I was there at the Seoul World Cup Stadium on Monday night. I had an open training session in front of 6,000 fans. And, oh my goodness, if you thought it was going to be a show thing for the fans... It was anything but. They did about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes of various drills. Um, started off with the obvious stretching and then they went into, what did they do? Rondos, pass and move. They did a 10 v 11 match with one goal, which was kind of more about shape. Um, and then they did an 11 v 11 with both goals um, match. And then when they'd done all of that, you'll have seen it hopefully by now, they did this crazy running thing, which apparently they do in almost every session now. So it's Gian, um, Gian Piero Vetroni, um, who is... <laughs> Gian Piero, he, he's, if you're not aware who he is, he's a renowned fitness coach. He's Tottenham's fit fitness coach nowadays. He was actually Antonio Conte's fitness coach at Juventus. He is legendary in Italy for the brutality of his fitness sessions. Brutality is probably too hard, harsh a word. It's not like he tortures them, but I suppose in a way mentally he probably does. In Italy, he used to have this um, uh, bell of shame, I think it was called, where the first person who couldn't handle the training, these runs up and down, up and down, would go and they'd have to ring the bell if they wanted to quit. So everyone would look at them and you know point and laugh like Nelson from The Simpsons, essentially, if they could they weren't too knackered and it was like legendary stuff like apparently uh Gianluca Viali Vialli um once locked him in a cup uh locked him in a I think they said he locked him in a in a cupboard and called the police on him because he felt he was so pushed so hard uh, and a lot of players over the years have had this kind of love-hate relationship with him and, and the Spurs players funnily enough love him they really really do you'll see him after things like hugging him and celebrating he's like quite a lively character um, and you see him, he's, if you haven't ever seen him on a pitch, he's like, kind of like a like a shock of grey, silvery hair kind of thing. Um, and he comes across very, I think he's 62 years old. Uh, he's been there and done it and seen it all. And so what he, they did after Monday's session was the international, sorry, the non-internationals who had come back um, first in pre-season had to do 42 lengths, yeah, 42 lengths of the pitch. And the internationals, who only came back recently, had to do 30. So what it is, is they break it into three. And they are going at pace. This isn't a light jog. They are at a pace, going the full length of pitch, back again, and then again. Then they get a breather. And it is, I mean, a brief breather. We're talking about 20 seconds, maybe, at the most. And that is pushing it. it might have even been less than that. And then they've got to go again. They've got to go again. This is 42 of them. And honestly... Oh my goodness, you just started to see as they went on, more and more of them really, really struggling. First they were falling back, and then we saw Harry Kane, he just kind of got to one of the sides, he's just kind of like, this, this is just a flop to the floor, a flop to the floor even. He was sick, um, he had to kind of, he was like hunched over, they put a cold towel on the back of his neck. When a fitness guy, uh, fitness, so physio went over, and he was kind of going over to check on him, but fair play to Harry Kane, 
it's kind of, I guess, who he is. He just kind of once he composed himself, got up and went back and do, started the running because he had to finish. He wanted to finish the 30 that he had to do. And don't forget, Kane, I think, only arrived on Saturday morning pretty much for the flight from Heathrow. So he he hadn't been doing any form of like Conte's training before that. Um, and Sonny as well. Sonny in the next... Within the next three, I think, runs, he also kind of fell down at the end and he was gone for a little while. Kane had to come over and uh, and pick him up. And it, as you can imagine, 6,000 Korean fans all there. It just went silent. It was like, you know, remember your South Park you used to go, you killed Kenny. It was a bit like, you killed Sonny. It was so like, they were all like, oh, what's he done? Conte's killed him kind of thing. Um, thankfully, he was fine. He just needed that moment to rest. And then he went back into the running again. Um, and then at the end, though, you saw when they'd done their 30, the, the ones who joined up, they were on that floor out of it. Sonny was like turned on his side, almost like a fetal position kind of thing. Uh, Bissouma, before we know what happened to him, he was like just lying there. Richarlison, I saw essentially on all fours, looking like he was maybe about to be sick. But you could tell that extra week's fitness for some of the other ones, they were flying. Like, um, who was at the front? Saar, uh, Hill and Davinson Sanchez were pretty much the three that were leading it for most of the way. They were super fit. Uh, Pape Matasar that was. And in the final lap, Troy Parrott steamed through and actually finished first out of everyone. And then the rest of the bunch kind of... You could see the the, interna the non-international to come back early, they were kind of dealing with the 42. They were knackered, don't get me wrong. They've got a really good interview coming out later tonight for you guys with Matt Doherty where he talks all about it, and it's excellent. He really, really speaks well on it. There's a man who's he's very happy and settled now. You can tell the way he is. Um, he looks very happy. You might have been able to tell that from some of the videos that Spurs have been putting out. He, uh, he clearly feels... In his groove now at Tottenham, I think is a better way to say it. And obviously he's back from his injury now. Um, played last night as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, keep out an eye out for the interview. But yeah, the training. I managed to get a photo of it. Um, we, I just kind of snapped it as a lot of them were lying on the floor absolutely out of it. And because I don't think the official photographers at the end were really taking photos of that, because obviously it doesn't show them in the great light, I guess. But as journalists, we have to report on what's happening. So I think the image I took has ended up everywhere. I think people were telling me it's on Sky Sports, it's in all the various newspapers have been using it, um, which is fine, which is fine. I guess it kind of, it summed up the moment. Um, but yeah, I understand like Conte is, uh, you know, I don't think he's, I don't think he sees what the fuss is all about. Um, we might, we didn't get a chance to ask him the other day, but it'd be interesting to maybe if we get a little sit down chat with him in the next couple of days to ask him about it. But from what I get, I think he just sees that that's training. That's what I used to do under Ventroni. You guys can do it as well. Um, but yeah, there was a there was a really insight. Often training, open training sessions, they are a bit for the crowd. They can be more for show. Often when we do Champions League ones, we only get 15 minutes at the beginning, and so you often really only see what they want you to see of, of more fitnessy stuff. Um, however, this was two plus hours of a real training session it was, uh, involving shape, drills and stuff like that, but obviously also this real um, ridiculously hard looking uh, runs at the end, which yeah, I, I've never seen Premier League footballers and these are elite athletes looking like that. It shows that all of the Instagram stories and the personal trainers over the summer and everything didn't prepare them for this. I wonder whether next summer they'll be telling a lot of these personal trainers, yeah, we're going to have to ramp it up a bit, otherwise I'm not going to be able to handle that first week coming back. Um, yeah, I think they're going to be one of the fittest teams in the Premier League, maybe the fittest, uh, looking at the way the way he's working with them. So yeah, that was training. That was certainly interesting. Then on Tuesday, I had the pre-match press conference, which was Conte and Sonny, um, which is a very different experience to the ones back at home. Uh, it was rammed with about 100 members of the media. There were, what was there, four of us from the UK, Sungmo as well, and pretty much, I'd say, 95 members of the Korean media and all the photographers in the front, the broadcasters with their cameras at the back. Um, it was at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. It was the one reason I said it was strange was just I guess the format. I say strange. It's probably not strange in any way, shape, or form for them. And if they came to 
UK press conferences with our embargoes and different sections and things like that, they'd think, what the hell is going on here? So, yeah, I understand it's absolutely a cultural thing. Um, but here, they they had the Team K League, which was the team Spurs were playing, which was a an amount, you know, it's essentially like an all-star 11 of the K League, which is currently playing. So these were kind of quite fit, sharp players yesterday in the match. So it was the boss, who was Kim Sang-sik. Yes, I've written these down, so I don't mess them up. Uh, and two of the players, Kim Jin Su and Lee Sung Woo. Uh, so, sorry, Lee, Lee Sung Woo. I still messed up. Um, so Kim Jin Su is one of Son's best friends, just so you know. And Lee Sung Woo, um, he played for Barcelona at youth level, played for Hellas Verona in Serie A as well. So I think he's pretty much considered probably the best, one of the most popular players anyway in the K-League. Um, but what was interesting was that almost like the Korean media saw them as not the main event, I guess. Um, when you talk to people over here, Korean people, they when you ask them who they support, they will often say a European team. They, maybe their own domestic league isn't seen as quite the having the same draw, I guess. Um, which is strange, obviously, when you when you go to different countries and, and you realise how big the Premier League is and stuff like this. So, yeah, and that kind of awkwardly resulted in this press conference where there's a moderator... And the moderator kept going to the room for a question and nobody was asking a question. So he kept kind of having to fill in any gaps with his own questions, uh, which was, yeah, strange. You'd have thought they'd want to ask. And it sounded like a really good press conference. They were all laughing away and stuff. But unfortunately, for that part of the press conference, they didn't translate it. So we couldn't ask a question either, which didn't help. Um, but yeah, so they obviously did all their thing. Um, and then it was the turn of Conte and Sonny to come out, which... As you can imagine, cameras went wild. Um, just cameramen suddenly snapping away. Um, and so we kind of, we readied ourselves because we, you know, UK media, we thought, okay, there's going to be hundreds of attempts to try and get questions in here for Sonny. Do you know how many questions Sonny had? One. It was really weird. It was really weird. We, you know, this guy is a national icon. Literally, my first day, I walked about 100 yards and there was a big advert, a billboard of him. Um, he is a national icon, you know, he is the uh, captain of the national team and he is a superstar here. Yet for some reason, there's only one question asked. Um, and Sungmo told me afterwards that it was just purely because they have a lot of access to him during the, the year because of the international games. He's always put up to talk. But I don't know. For me, again, it could just very much be a cultural thing. But for us, I suppose the equivalent would be Harry Kane in England, being the England captain. And I think people would still ask him lots of questions, I guess. Um, the one question he was asked, Sonny, was, was, was a good one, to be fair. It was about the training and how he dealt with it. And he admitted no one was talking in that changing room. And if they were, they were complaining about the training afterwards, just how tough it was. Um, not complain. Complaining is a tough one. Just saying how hard it was because that's the weird thing about this. They're not really complaining about it because I think they they know what it's doing to them, um, and they kind of they're all getting incredibly fit. So, so yeah, it's um, it is it's an interesting one. Um, and yeah, you might be asking, well, why didn't you guys ask me a question? Well, the reasoning behind that is we only got one question each, and pretty much all of us we haven't seen Conte for months and. For us, there were so many questions to ask Conte because of, you know, having, uh, you know, essentially he was, his future was in doubt, wasn't it, towards the end of last season. We've had so much since then. If you think about it, we've had him staying, his talks with Paratici, his talks with Levy, five new signings uh, and everything. A totally different Tottenham Hotspur, really, over the summer. So it, it sounds awful to say we didn't want to waste a question on Sonny, but with Sonny, we know we can grab him like in the mix zone after a game, which is exactly what happened. So for us, it was all about Conte. And interestingly, I'd say for the Korean media, it was more about Conte. They were asking him a fair few questions. Um, and like I say, he was in a very good mood. He really was in a very good mood. Um, but what was really interesting, every time he said the word Sonny, all the cameramen went mad in front of us, like the photographers, and you just heard the, the snapping noise, the shutter noise going. Um, it was almost as if they thought, oh, we need to capture the moment he said Sonny, even though they just missed it. 
Um, it was like a photograph, actually. It's, it's not video. It doesn't make any difference. But yeah, and they were doing that. And they were doing this really odd effect of all... Like, they were swaying. They were going up one side of the room to the other. Like, it was almost like watching a wave of people. Um, and they did. They just, just kept going up and down, getting different angles. And so it must have been so off-putting when Conte and Sonny were kind of answering what they had to answer. Um, but yeah, some of the Korean journalists afterwards... Um, they claimed that because there was one question from the Korean media which was uh, asking about can you settle the controversial, controversial debate here in Korea that um, Sonny is whether he is world class or not and the, the Korean media claimed that Sonny's face didn't look very impressed with that question we didn't notice that as a UK media if I've got to be honest we didn't notice that um, but Conte you know, Conte says he's world class every week so it wasn't really a hard question for him he was always going to answer the way he did um, but Conte was good with us. We got in some some questions about all those things I just said about staying at the club, the transfers, and everything. Um, and he gave, yeah, he gave some pretty strong positive answers. Bearing in mind this was the man last year who was keeping us our toes. One week it looked like he was staying, the next week he was heading off. Um, he was saying, what did he say last week? Uh, on uh, Tuesday, he said, I'm totally involved with this project. He kept talking about it just being the beginning of this project, how happy he was with the signings that they'd made. Honestly, this is Conte as we want to see him. Uh, this is very far from the Turf Moor night when he was thoroughly fed up. Um, yeah, it was good. And he, he seems genuinely excited about kind of what can come. Um, I guess because everything is being crafted really around what he wants it to be. Um, it is pretty much a, yeah, it is Conte's Tottenham Hotspur right now. Um, I asked him about, you know, pretty much, I think I'm trying to remember exactly what my question was. It was something like, you know, Spurs have signed five players early in the window before this tour. That's really unusual. Tottenham don't do this. Is this something that you really made it clear to them you needed to happen? And also, do you want more? So this was his answer. Uh, we signed five players. And when the ideas are very clear, it's more simple to go into the transfer window and sign the players. Our plan was very clear about the positions and the roles in which we needed to improve, and we did it. I think the club worked very well in this window. For every coach to have the players quickly is very important because you can work with them and try to put them into our idea of football. In the past, I and he kind of stopped, hesitated, and went, I think it was a good signs of uh, it was good to sign five players quickly. I think what he was going to do, which he'd done anyway indirectly, was essentially say Spurs have done it in a bit of a rubbish way in, recent, in previous years, which is true. I mean, he by saying that if you have a clear idea, it's no problem, he is saying that they didn't have a clear idea in the past just by you know linking that. He kind of is, um, and I don't think that's rocket science. You know, I think that's that's the way it's been. They've always looked for these bargain signings late on, and now. He's got a squad that he can properly prepare and get ready for what he wants them. It's going to make a huge difference in those early weeks of the season, especially. Um, and yes, and he did say, you know, essentially, yes, of course, he wants more. He'd um, any the club will continue to look for any opportunities that old line. Uh, but yes, we know there will be more, maybe one or two. Who knows? Maybe more if there's sudden departures. Um, but yeah, it is. You know, Spurs knew this summer. They've got one of the best coaches in the world. And that's why I think you've seen £150 million injected in as well to help out. They couldn't hang around. They had to absolutely capitalise on what they'd got. Um, it was quite interesting the way the presser ended was that um, he he had to do... Um, he was going to hold up a scarf with Sonny, which was the, the pose that the Team K-League uh, boss and his players had done as well. But someone clearly had asked, do the Sonny celebration, but in Korean. Because Sonny suddenly did a face like, oh, man. I think probably thinking Conte would be utterly embarrassed by that. Um, but do you know what? I think because he's in such a good mood, he absolutely went for it. If you're not sure what it is, it's, the, you know, it's, it's that one. Um, and he, he nailed it, to be fair. He did it much better than I just did it. And he had a big old smile on his face. It was really good, actually. It was really good where I was sitting because they actually turned and I got a good photo again on my phone um, of them. And he was, he was chuckling the way the whole time. Um, you know, 52 year old Italian, and he's absolutely getting into it. Um, for a guy that's grumbled about, you know, pre season tours in the past uh, at Chelsea and the like, he looks like he's enjoying this one. Um, he seems very happy, and uh, when Antonio Conte is happy, I've said this in the past, 
when he's a happy man, big things happen. And I think that's why everyone at Tottenham is pretty excited about this. Um, yeah, and we had the match. We had the match yesterday, which um, I should say, when I was in the hotel uh, waiting for or something on Monday, I think it was, um, a member of the um, Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Club from South Korea handed me this. And you might have seen them in the background at the match. They are little cards that say Antonio. It's essentially it's the Antonio chant, which obviously it's just Antonio, Antonio. Um, and then on the back, it's got loads of chants for the Spurs fans, the Korean fans to learn. You know, when the Spurs go marching on, um, we are Tottenham Super Tottenham from the lane, with the park. Like, it, it's all of it. It's it's loads of stuff on there. Um, and it's brilliant. It's just it's really clever little simple thing. I think Conte took a photo with uh, with that in the background, like loads of these big heads of his in the background. He was loving it. Um, there was this great moment in the match last night when the I mean let's start with explaining exactly what it's like at a match in South Korea like this. So you've got your normal friendlies. Uh, if you've ever been to one, they're normally quite calm uh, affairs. You know, just people there to be entertained. South Korea is very, very different. They're such lovely people that they just show this incredible respect. They've got this huge respect for people they admire. Um, so what you ended up with is 64,100 people in the stadium. You might have seen it was like sold out within minutes kind of thing. Um, they are the most passionate set of fans probably, or certainly one of the most passionate I've seen out there. And they just have this appreciation of every little moment. So here's an example for you. So early on, Christian Romero went down. Um, it, some kind of not, I think it was like a heavy fall in the air uh, from an aerial challenge. And when he was kind of needing treatment, everyone was like, oh, it was like this real kind of, ooh. And then when he started to get up, the stadium announcer said, let's give a big hand to Christian Romero kind of thing. And just everyone started applauding. It was like, it was a really nice moment. And we thought that was kind of maybe like a one-off the UK journalist, you know. But actually, every time a player did something, and even probably things that we'd maybe see as the most basic things, so say Pierre-Emma Hoybier in the second half did a sliding tackle and the ball went out of play on the, in, on, on the side of the pitch, not near a goal or anything, and suddenly the Tanoi would go, pierre Emil Hoybier, and they would all applaud because he'd done that. Um, there were some moments when, like, Sanchez tried to get a ball out and missed it. Oh, sorry, tried to stop a ball going from a corner, but it did, and he missed it, and it was still like, Davinson Sanchez, and they all applaud. It's such a, a surreal experience, and it's just... I don't know, it's it's just about respecting what the players are doing. And it is a far cry from what we're used to on the terraces, you know, most football watched apart around the world, really. You know, if we're going to be, you know, honest about it, it's probably more supporting as it is about, I guess, criticising, isn't it, elsewhere in the world? Whereas this was a real appreciation for what was happening and these, like, superstars, you know, that they were seeing in front of them. Um... And I think the knock-on effect was because they were cheering every moment where there was a little bit of skill or a tackle or a, a nice bit of control was such a roar from around the stadium. It kicked on the players as well. So the intensity really went up in the game. What probably, I think even Conte was surprised, what was meant to be maybe a bit of more of a low-key match ended up being quite a, a game of a high intensity at little points. Um, there were some feisty tackles and there were nine goals. Um, the K-League players, obviously, like I said, they were in their, their season. So they're fitter and that little bit sharper, which gave Spurs a good test as well. Uh, like I said, there were some feisty tackles. Benton could put in a few. Davis and Sanchez put in loads. Davis and Sanchez had a... <sighs> going to be harsh. Not a great game. Um, he just looked a bit out of control at times. He did two lunges that probably were at least worthy of yellow cards each. So he probably got to get him sent off. He started shoving uh, a Korean attacker who he thought had dived, but when we all saw the replays, it should have been a penalty because Sanchez had uh, kicked his leg. Um, then he gave away the free kick that led to one of um, Team K-League's goals. He was just having a bit of a mare last night. It was like he was playing it. He's, I think he, it's almost like he only has one way of playing, and that's like full-on Sanchez, I guess. Um, yeah, it, you know, hyped up Sanchez aside, it was it was a good run out for the team. Good run out for, for Conte's men. 
pretty much most of the senior stars got at least 45 minutes. A couple of players, two or three, got about 76 minutes. Richarlison, interestingly, bearing in mind he only um, returned to training uh, later in the week, last week. So, yeah, lots of minutes given. Um, oh, yeah, that was the moment I was going to say about Conte, wasn't I? It was that he, early in the game, they showed him on the big screen. And the crowd, Way! it was like a massive cheer from all the fans. Um, and I think he didn't know what that was about. So when it happened again, maybe about 10 minutes ago, or 10 minutes later, I think one of his coaches must have like given him a nudge. And he looked up and he went, and he like waved. And honestly, the biggest roar you can imagine is, like, yeah, Conte's waving at us kind of thing. It was so cool. And he kind of had a bit of fun with that as well. You know, it's it's like a massively hyped up version of when he as, when he uh, applauds back to Spurs fans when they're singing his name over in the UK. Um, yeah, it's really funny. It's it's so lovely. It, it really is. It's it's lovely to see the different ways that people enjoy their football around the world. That, that's one of the coolest things about being able to get out here. Um, so yeah, so I think what else about the game is kind of key in a general sense. We're going to talk about specifics and players. Um, Let's see, I've got his quotes here about he said about it. Um, I think it was a good game and to play in front of 64,000 people is very exciting for the players. Then to try to find this atmosphere was great and for this reason I think also the players tried to push themselves even though we just started pre-season. For many players, only three days of trainings, uh, training sessions. Other players have started since 10 days ago. It was a good game, I've seen positive things. Uh, if you're not aware of the score, by the way, it was 6-3. It was an absolutely crazy end to the match, which left me just having to rewrite and write everything I was doing. It was, it was madness. And there was moments in the latter, probably 20 minutes, when I'm essentially going... Which is pretty much the life of a journalist writing anyway. But, oh, there was so much to do. So, uh, I've seen positive things. Other situations that we can improve, but we've just started this season. Now, the most important thing is to try to bring all the players to be fit the first game, because in three weeks I have to start the Premier League. And for now, my first target is to have all the players fit and be ready to start. But I repeat, I'm satisfied with the game. We enjoyed the atmosphere and we take positives from this situation. It was a friendly game. The mentality of my players has to be to play every game and get the win. The first half was good intensity. I didn't ask... Oh, sorry. Sung Mo asked this question, I should stress. He asked whether Conte had asked the players to play with a high intensity, to which he's saying, yeah, no, it was the it was the atmosphere. I didn't ask for a high intensity from my players because I repeat, in this period, it was very difficult for them, especially those who've just started to have training sessions after one month of rest. For this reason, we must try to manage very well the training sessions, especially the physical aspect, and then to give minutes and time during the game. I'm satisfied with the commitment, the attitude, the intensity that the players put in, but honestly, I didn't ask anything today. I asked them to play with the right mentality, to enjoy the game, to enjoy the atmosphere, to respect the people, and to play in front of 64,000 people. You give, have to give respect for this reason. To put commitment and to score six goals was positive. To concede three goals is the negative aspect that for sure we have to improve. So looking at specific players, obviously, probably one of the standouts uh, was obviously the debut of Richarlison, the only new signing available to play yesterday. Um, and you know, he was bright. He was decent. I think you could see the promise that he will bring in terms of he started the first half pretty much. He was playing as the, the central striker. So it showed that he could do that. His hold up play was good. He gets his head down. He likes to dribble with the ball. Second half, he was out on the right, occasionally popped up on the left, sometimes as a bit of a support striker for Kane. Um, he did this one run into the first half, which took him past a couple of players and the goalkeeper, but unfortunately just took a heavy touch around the keeper, and the ball rolled to Emerson Royale, who it was a bit of a sitter, to be honest. He somehow managed to kind of slice it wide rather than slide into the net, but... Um, now, Richardson was good. Like I say, 76 minutes. He had Luke, In the first half, he said Lucas Moore and... Brian Hill on either side of him. Um, you know, Tottenham, I've said this before, will monitor, continue to monitor opportunities to sign a striker. But it's, you know, I'd go as far to say maybe if they can't sign one or there's nothing in the market that's really worth it, I think Richarlison will do the job as a backup striker pretty well. Uh, just, look, again, I must stress the massive caveat. This is a friendly and you can't read too much in, in terms of friendlies. But what you can read is is the way that he holds up the ball and the fact that we saw him for Everton for a lot of last season with Dominic Calvert-Lewin being out, being able to play that lone striker role. So it's very much 
within his um, wheelhouse, as it were. So, and I think, yes, I just got to see it in person. Um, yeah, he did a, a lot of good things, some nice touches, some nice movement. I'd say the bulk of things didn't quite come off on the night, but I think that's a sharpness thing. That That's really to do with that. Uh, he just brought lots of energy to it as well. He's um, looked quite good with Kane. I think he played the ball through to Son when Son ran through and, and the man was sent off for taking him out. Um, yeah, so it looked good. It's good. I mean, when you think about it, he is essentially the Steven Bergwijn replacement, um, who Conte also saw as another striker. And I'd say that Richarlison is better suited physically to that role than Bergwijn was, as much as I like Bergwijn. Um, more of a natural focal point for, I guess, for attacks, which is exactly what Conte wants. So what I find fascinating as well is when you really think about it, Spurs have become, they used to be under Poch, and I think they are becoming, again, a big physical team. And I just think, maybe subtly, Conte has been upgrading certain players with bigger versions of them. Um, obviously, people may say better versions, but certainly physically, there is no contest. I mean, I was, I was thinking about it. So you've got Richarlison replacing Bergwijn, it's a bigger physical player. Kulisewski, Brian Hill, you know, bigger physical player. Even Perisic for Sergio Reguilon, same again. And Yves Basuma for Harry Winks. It's like he's just kind of gradually been going, OK, I want a bigger version of you, a bigger version of you. And, and we know it's what we want. They are going to be a threat from set pieces. And we're going to talk about set pieces later because a certain Gianni Vio, his presence was felt yesterday as well. Um, so, yeah, he'll fit in well with Charleston. Everyone we've spoken to thus far, they all call him a character. He's a popular guy. He was very popular at Everton in the dressing room. You know, they really did love him there. Um, and the fans as well, after he promised he would keep them up. And he did, with a lot of goals in the running. Um, and I think, think the fact that he's made such a big um, impression so early on, I think is uh, it says a lot. It's interesting, his, his language skills, that's something. Because we tried to uh, get an interview with him, but I don't think he was quite comfortable enough with his English to do an interview. Bear in mind, I think he's been in the country for about five years now. Um, and that's not to say that, I don't know, say I came to Korea and lived here for five years, that I'd be able to do an interview in Korean either. But uh, I just found that quite interesting. I think he did, someone said he did his first English interview for Everton literally right at the end of last season. Um, and, you know, obviously it was a little bit still... Don't get me wrong, I'm sure he's got enough English to, to communicate absolutely fine with everyone. But although you can see, we're always seeing him hanging around with Emerson and, and, and Lucas, the Brazilian lads. Lucas seems to have this caretaker role, kind of like the, uh, almost like the babysitter of Brazilian players that come in. I know he had Carlos Vinicius, Emerson Royale, and, and now um, Richarlison as well. He's just, a, he's just a lovely guy. I haven't spoken to him today. He just kind of reminded of just what a lovely guy Lucas is, which makes me feel so bad when I, I write that, you know, his talent require, you know deserves more goals and assists. It really does. Um, it makes you feel bad because he's such he's the nicest guy. He really is. And he, he will just do, you know, he, he spoke to us for ages as well. And he's just absolutely uh, willing to just kind of go along with whatever you're doing. So it does... This is the side of it. You know, people I think have asked me this before, like, do you feel bad if you say something, if you say something critical? But I'd like to think it's coming from a good place with Lucas and good intentions. And I really do think he's incredibly talented. And you see that. Even last night, he was going on these pacey, skillful runs that get the crowd worked up. But ultimately, there wasn't anything at the end of it. And I think if he could fix that, if he could bring more goals and assists, just to match his talent, he'd be incredible. Um, so yeah, but it did make me feel a little bit bad when he's, he's, he's so nice. Um, Conte said nice things about Richarlison afterwards. He said, today I've seen a lot of positive things about Richie. The first half he played like a number nine and the second half he played on the right behind the striker. I think he can play in all these three positions. I think he is strong physically and a good personality, good character, good quality. For sure. Also for Richie in this period, he's working and we are working on the tactical aspects with him because he has to go into our idea. At the same time, we have to work on the physical aspects for him to be fit. But for sure, he is a player that gives me important positions up front. Um, I think that should be options up front. But I think that's what he means anyway. He's a player that is a good player, strong and very good to protect the ball and attack the space. Also, he made a good assist. He means for that attack that led to the red card. I'm very happy that we signed him. And that's... That's a lovely, that's a big pat on the back, isn't it? When you've played your first game and he's very happy that you signed him. 
So yeah, that was positive. Richardson definitely a positive. Be interesting to see kind of how he plays again. Obviously, it's slightly, uh, with no disrespect, obviously, a, a, I guess, a better team in Sevilla. Um, depends what kind of level they're at in their pre-season fitness. That would be interesting to see. The difference is there as well. And obviously, hopefully, Eric Lamella involved as well. It'd be lovely if we can get him after the game uh, for a little interview. Um, what else? The younger players. There were a fair few younger players out there. Conte is making this an older squad, but actually, there's quite a few younger players in there. Um, kind of dotted around. So Brian Hill, we spoke about him earlier, obviously sent packing back to Spain. Um, he, do you know what? He was quite bright last night. It was good. Maybe just fluffs the ball a couple of times in the training session. He had so many in the match uh, they had in the training session. He had so many moments in front of goal where he just maybe mis uh, connected badly with the ball or, or hit a weak shot. That's just one area of game he has to fix, I think, it is when he gets into that final third it is the um, it's that final touch or, or the shot, but he was one of the brightest players. It was his one-two with Eric Dyer. Uh, that Eric Dyer scored that cracking left foot rocket of a goal. Very nice goal. Um, yeah, Hill was good. It's difficult with him unless a big permanent offer comes in for him. I presume he'll head out on loan again. Um, I just I'd love it to not be Spain. I know that sounds bad because I obviously think he'll be so happy and he'll flourish in Spain. But I just think he needs to adapt to a different kind of league. I'd love it to be the Premier League, maybe the Bundesliga is very similar. But I get the impression that most of the interest seems to be coming from Spain and a bit from France as well. So, um, but like I say, very fit. He was one of the ones leading the way in those forty-two pitch long runs. Um, Papa Matasar, we got to see him in the first time in the Spurs shirt after signing last summer. He was, you know, you've got to remember he's only 19. And like I say, when I saw him kind of getting into the lift earlier. He looks like a, he looks like a boy. He does. He looks like a, and this is meant with no disrespect, he, he looks like a 19-year-old. I think sometimes in our heads we kind of think of players as being a bit older uh, than they actually are. But he looks like a 19-year-old. He's got a big frame. So I'd imagine... The case with him now will very much be just, I guess, filling out, as naturally, uh, you know, guys do when they're that age. Uh, because yeah, I think he'll need to bulk up a little bit to be able to handle the Premier League and the physicality of it. But um, yeah, he, he was bright. He showed a bit of energy. I'd say he was sometimes lacking a little bit of quality in what he did. He was playing alongside Pierre Mehoibier. And I think with Skip and Benton in the first half, K-League team was struggling to get through a bit. It was a bit more open in the second half with, um, you know, obviously that's a bit of a different, newer pairing, although it was the first time Skip and Bentenko had ever played together, which was interesting as well because of the timing of his injury and, and Bentenko's arrival. Um, I think the key with Saar now, the decision I think Conte has to make is, is essentially it's one club versus player in terms of for Spurs, it probably would be better to have him hanging around as that fifth central midfielder to be able to play in domestic cup matches I guess and with the bigger bench to be able to come on if needed in the Premier League but on the flip side because of the numbers involved and they're five over their foreign player limit he's probably not going to get registered for the Champions League and in that case you know that that's not a great thing we saw with Juan Foyth how you know it's quite a tough thing for a manager to do and the players you know they want to play in the best competition in the world but then maybe that's the club side of things, but maybe on the player side of things, best for his development for a 19-year-old, he's probably playing week in, week out um, somewhere. Again, would rather see him myself in the Premier League or Bundesliga um, because I think he needs to adapt. And, and you know, he doesn't barely speaks any English, um, which, you know what? I don't want to be really ultra-critical, but... If I knew I was moving to England in a year's time, I would probably have tried to learn some English. Um, it may be that he's got a little basic level where he's shy and he doesn't use it. Um, but certainly I think if you knew in a year's uh, kind of advance of a year that you were going to move to a country, you'd probably try and nail as many lessons as possible. Um, unless, you know, I could be doing a huge disservice here. He, he may be that he was given the impression that he... God, that is a big train. That is just rattling the wall. Um, he may have been given the impression that he wasn't going to spend much time in England and he was going to be loaned straight back out again. And if that's the case, maybe. But you'd hope he would plan for a future in England. I don't know. Again, I don't want to be critical of a 19-year-old. That, that's really harsh. Um, 
But I was just surprised when I heard that. I, I was told that his, his English isn't really, it's not really there. Um, again, I, I don't know many much of languages myself. I am doing Duolingo of Italian, which I'm, I've, I think I've got a 130 day streak, which I'm very excited about. It pretty much it comes from going on these adventures, as it were, and, and realizing that as a kid I messed up. I really didn't learn languages uh, or I didn't concentrate enough on learning them. I, I wish I had one of my regrets. Um, so yeah, I can't really complain, can I? It's a tad hypocritical of me. Um, what else We've got young says Brandon Austin made his debut. Um, I was, I was, someone, someone from Spurs told me it was his debut. I was quite surprised. I could have sworn I'd seen him play in a friendly before, but apparently not. Um, he made one good save, but he was beaten by Gui Sung Cho's looping header right at the stroke of half time. It was a very good header. Austin will probably feel that he maybe was slightly out of position, but it was a very good header. Like I said, Skippy back in midfield since first time since January, and he was like his industrious, energetic self. Um, obviously, it was that pelvic injury, wasn't it, that he'd had. Ryan Sessegnon played just the first half as well. A few good forays forward. Uh, one cross that was a good one that uh, Richardson tried to do a diving header and couldn't quite get onto. Um, obviously, he's going to look to impress uh, Conte as much as possible before Perisic is available to play again. Then they had the young quartet came off the bench in the final 15 minutes. Harvey White played well down the left. Um, he was certainly bright. Uh, Troy Parrott came off the bench as well. Played up front. He had a couple of nice little moments, including one shot with his left foot. Had a really good one-on-one -on -one interview with Troy um, on what day was it? Monday. There was um, Spurs were putting on a like a session where they kind of play uh, football and skills with these young kids from uh, Seoul, and uh, yeah, it was Dyer, Troy Para, and Jaffet Tanganga, and I, and I did the um, I did uh, Troy and Jaffet as one-on-one -on -one interviews, which was both really interesting. Troy is very mature. He's really kind of mature, and you can see it now. He's twenty years old, but those last six months, it was just explained that really just had this moment last season where he just had to seize the opportunity and just ensure, I guess, that his football career wasn't going to go down a different path. And he really did. You saw how good he was for MK Dons in that second half of the season. It was a key part, really, of getting him into the playoffs. Um, and he's, yeah, he was a really mature chat. I spoke to him about lots of things, including Conte and what Conte has been telling him. Conte essentially has been teaching him how to be a Tottenham striker that Conte wants, uh, which I found fascinating. He said that Sonny and uh, Kane are always there for him whenever he wants to get advice. Uh, it's a really good inter interview. Have a little look um, on my Twitter feed, you'll see it. Jaffet was good as well. Uh, Jaffet told me, again, he's had chats with Conte. Conte wants him to play as either the left or right side of the back three, not the central one, more the two on the right. Uh, sorry, two on the, the sides. Um, he doesn't know what his future holds. He's just trying to kind of impress at the moment. Obviously, a lot of links with moves elsewhere. He's got an Italian agent, so you see a lot of Italian links with Jaffet. Um, but yeah, he was. Uh, they're both really interesting, um, really interesting interviews. Other youngsters that came off the bench, Charlie Sayers, great opportunity for him. Um, if you're not aware of who Charlie is, he's 18 year old. He only signed for Spurs in December from Southend United. He was playing in the National League for them. He'd literally just broken through as a 17 year old. Came from non league football only about maybe 18 months ago, something like that. Incredible rise, essentially from Southend to Seoul. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, and, and he got to come on last night as well, which was lovely for him. I think. Fingers crossed. I think I'm interviewing him at some point. I was meant to interview him today, but it didn't happen. I think I'll be interviewing him in the next couple of days. I think that'll be a really interesting one, so keep an eye out for that. Essentially, an 18-year-old lad suddenly told on, I think maybe even on the day they were flying, that, by the way, Conte likes you. You're coming out on this tour. So it should be a really good interview, I'm sure. Because he's very young. I think I'll have to ask a million questions because we know what we're all like as teenagers. Maybe we didn't use... Uh, the longest of sentences when answering questions, uh, especially, I think it'll be his first ever, I don't know if it'll be his first ever media interview, he must have done something at South End, but certainly as a Premier League club player, I think it will be. So yeah, I'll bring that to you. 
Uh, and Malachi, Malachi Fagan Walcott was there as well. I had a little chat with him the other day, not an interview, just just kind of chat as we were watching the, uh, the session with the kids in Seoul. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. I think I might be mistaken, but I think he was the late call up for Joe Roden, who um, couldn't go through illness. Uh, poor old Joe Roden, it's just it's just perennially unlucky. Uh, yeah, I think Malachi took his spot. It might have been some reshuffling of the squad. It might have been, I don't know, but I, th I think it was him. Um, so, yeah, so that's all the young players. And they all did themselves no disservice at all. They all, all fitted in quite comfortably, looked good. I'd probably say, yeah, no, I think all four of them did. I think they came on and did well. Um, but, you know, the star of the shows really were. It was the Kane and, uh, sorry, the Son and Kane show. It really was. Um, and what was really, I suppose, exciting to see all round was how quickly they clicked into gear. Bear in mind, I just said as well, 48 hours ago, before that match, Kane was throwing up at the side of the pitch. Sonny was collapsing, essentially, in the same place. Um, and here they are, 48 hours later, and they were, they were unplayable, to be honest, the two of them. And it bodes really well. If they're going to be that sharp to start off... Um, it was quite interestingly done. So Conte at halftime brought on six different players, um, but he deliberately left Emerson on for one minute, just over one minute, so that Sonny could come on and get his own special reception from the crowd. It was very nice, and the, and the crowd kind of properly went wild. But actually, you know, within that kind of minute before he come on, Kane had uh, already forced an own goal. One of his classic, you know, those whipped low crosses he does. Um, and the um, I think I've got his name here, Jin Hyuk Kim sent it into his own goal. Um, it was just seesaw at that point in the match. So Lars Veldwick made it two-two with a low shot that I think Loris was unsighted. If I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, that made it two-two. But then Kane pretty much within a minute went straight up the other end of the pitch and smashed in a, a drive. A really nice finish actually. Um, and I think probably when you talk about, I mean, Kane and Sonny looking sharp, I think that's just part of this fitness thing. I think it is. I think it's getting them fitter quickly. And I think the recovery, from what I understand, is really quick and good. And that's why they're not feeling any ill effects from doing it, which is obviously the most crucial thing. Um, yeah, Sonny looked on the ball straight away as well. So John Amano, um, you might have seen it, he, he handballed. He essentially was doing that. He was kind of almost caught it in his arms. So Kane, obviously, as as you would in a polite way, gave the penalty to Sonny in front of uh, the South Korean fans. And he kind of like did a little bit of a dinked finish, which um, nicely went on. And then he went and did his photograph celebration as well, which only sent the fans into more delirium. Um, then Amano actually had a nice redemption arc after his handball. He did a free kick, which... We're going to be ultra critical. There was a two-man wall, I think it was. They kind of ducked and the ball found its way through, which I think surprised Lloris. And then it went in the bottom corner inside his post. Um, but then again, straight away, Spurs swept up the other side of the pitch. I think it was Richarlison put Son through. Um, Don Min Kim on the edge of the area. Um, really unfortunate for him. He had the kind of the dual infamy of not only bringing down the nation's hero in Sonny, but then getting sent off in a friendly for it, which was a bit harsh. I don't think any Spurs player really wanted that. Um, and funnily enough, from the free kick, a man that maybe we might have thought, oh no, we don't really want him to take it, was Harry Kane, buried it. Absolutely buried the shot in the bottom corner. And you know what? Apparently it was one of Gianni Vio's um, creations and that was what it was and actually when you looked at various set pieces last night there were they were different there were there was lots of extra movement lots of name calling getting people into positions it was very organized there were like some of the free kicks had Spurs players in front of the free kick like a kind of a mini wall which would suddenly break and it was all far more I just felt more organized and that's not to say it was an absolute shambles before but set pieces clearly was an area Spurs wanted to fix and Conte wanted to fix, and that's why Vio came in. If you're not aware of Gianni Vio, worked for the Italian national squad, worked for uh, Brentford, Leeds, various Italian teams as well. Um, he's credited with, you know, Italy kind of won the, the Euros with 
Yeah, a fair few. Their free kicks were utterly dangerous. They were really, really dangerous. Um, and he's created 4,830 different routines for the set pieces. And what he does is he tailors them to different characteristics of the players he finds at each club. And apparently they've been working hard on a lot of those. And each match day... Um, so even like on Wednesday and on Saturday ahead of the game against Sevilla, they will spend a, a real session in the morning of the game going through set pieces and tactical shape and things like that. Um, and yeah, yeah. so uh, so Kane scored. Uh, and then the game was rounded off with Sonny, intercepted a bad pass, rounded the keeper, slotted it home. And what was really nice was, I think just so they could say they've seen it, he did the real trademark Sonny, which was the slide and the, uh, the uh, photograph celebration. Uh, and obviously they went crazy and uh, I think just really ominous I guess for the players uh, sorry for defences across the Premier League really which is like Kane and Son show uh, sorry the Son and Kane show it's got to go Son and Kane especially in South Korea the Son and Kane show is properly up and running um, again it was a friendly but it was more about their movement their movement and the execution of what they were doing was was sharp and that's the key thing um so yeah it wasn't all about the players that were there um it also was about the players who weren't there on the night it was a strange one because they gave us team sheets um the uh it was all a bit mad the thing we didn't have any wi-fi until about half time which which didn't help when you're trying to report on the game um and mobile signal was a nightmare because you had sixty-four thousand people all taking photos and uploading them and guessing to various social media things um but the team sheet was... I looked at the team sheet and I was like, oh, I know that player's not available. I know that one's there. I mean, he's on the bench. It was just crazy like that. So two of those were Kulisevsky and Ben Davies. We, as soon as I sat in my seat, I could see that they were doing these runs up and down. They were doing the pitch long runs, essentially. But they were doing... Obviously, they had to do a half pitch because they were, it was during the warm-up. Um, and as soon as you saw them doing that, they came out before the warm-up started and they were still there when the other players were up. So it was like, okay, well, they're not playing. Um, Kuliseski had kind of come off a bit early in the open training on Monday. He was kind of holding his calf. There were some suggestions that Ben Davies maybe picked up a little injury on that day as well. But Conte didn't really refer to that. So I'll, I'll give you his quotes in a little bit on, on them. Um, but yeah, um, obviously Perisic wasn't there either. Perisic is almost back. Um, Conte told me as I'll tell you in the quote in a bit that he's likely to return to do some training today he was likely to come back he's been doing fitness work but just not ball work uh, but I think he was going to do some of that today um, he's going to be such a big addition you know, 33 years old but he's super fit 10 goals, 9 assists last season um, from 48 appearances and most of those 48 appearances were starts and pretty much 90 minute displays he's not a man that's substituted very much he is super fit he will be huge for spurs um yeah so ben david and kudisevsky was said them so down to the three that missed it they looked shattered at one point during those runs as, as you would uh and then there's eves basuma and fraser forster so i found out before the game that they were not well and they would miss it and obviously we got it confirmed by uh, i asked conte about it afterwards and yes, it is COVID. So what you have to do in Korea, which I think I explained to you before I came, because I was obviously worried about it happening, was you have to do a pre-departure test back in England. And then when you arrive within 72 hours, you have to do an arrival test. So I just did mine. As soon as I arrived, pretty much I went across to the uh, testing centre at the airport and got mine done. Um, but Spurs, obviously, I think they would have done it just within the 72 hours at some point. And Basuma and Forsters came up positive, um, which was actually, I'll admit, was my kind of nightmare because I guess it's a little bit different, I suppose, for me. I was just worried about getting so stuck, isolated in my room and, and maybe potentially missing my flight back, which is perhaps what might have to happen to Basuma and Forster. Um, they're isolating, but Korean rules are slightly different to UK ones. So Korean rules, you have to isolate for seven days um, from the test, the date of that positive result. Um, whereas obviously in England, it's what is it currently? It's five. Well, technically, legally, you don't even have to isolate in England. Um, but obviously, the recommendation is five days and then a negative test, isn't it? Um, and essentially, until you get that negative test. But yeah, it is law over here. So I think Spurs are at the moment trying to work out exactly how it works because as it stands, 
they wouldn't be allowed on that flight back um, with Korean rules. So they would have to stay in there, isolating in their rooms in the team hotel. So at the moment, yeah, they're trying to work out exactly how that's going to play and whether they have to uh, get a separate flight back a few days later or whether they, um, yeah, or whether they can, if they have a negative test before it get on. Because like I say, in England, the five days they might just make it and they might, if they have a negative test, then they can get on that plane. Whereas here, yeah, I think they're trying to work out exactly what they are and aren't allowed to do and, and whether... UK rules apply to them or Korean rules, you know, it's, it's all very complicated. And it's not ideal, but especially for, you know, goalkeeper, you know, Fraser Forster probably can get back up and running as long as he doesn't have our after effects quite well. But Suma, that's a big old chunk. You think about it, he's spending it all in his room. It's not like he can go out either. So all of this fitness he's built up in the last, what, week or so, is pretty much going to be undone because he's going to be in his room. They're going to have to give him equipment, I guess, he's presumably have to run on the spot I don't know whether they can push in some kind of running machine I don't I honestly don't know how they're going to do it um but yeah and he'd look good there was a training match on Monday like I say and and he looked very good he was very calm and assured in what he did so I just hope that doesn't set him back too much um not good again so I asked Conte about all five players missing and this is his full quote so you know everything about Kulisewski and Ben Davies, you've seen that they had a good training session on the pitch. Ben Davies also yesterday. For Ben, it was a second training session and he needed to recover and run and do the same training as the players did in the last two days. It was the same for Kulisewski. And yeah, we had a problem with COVID with Basuma because the test was positive. Basuma and Fraser, for this reason, they aren't here with us. Yes, they are isolating. Perisic, he's working very well. He's very close. I think tomorrow he could have a part in the training session with us. Honestly, we are satisfied because his recovery is going very fast and we are happy about this. And when we come back to London, he will start to have some of the training sessions with us. So, yeah, that's all of the players really covered. Um, and I think the key now is hoping that no one that was interacting with uh, Basuma or Forster comes down with any symptoms of anything. It doesn't spread around the squad again. Um, but look. COVID is going to play its part in football for the coming weeks and probably in the coming season. It just is. There's going to be moments when it comes into play. And now, like I say, it's not to mention any long-term effects that certain people can have. It leaves weird this stuff. Like my long-term effect from when I had it is still my um, smell. Not my smell personally, like I stink or anything. Uh, it's actually my sense of smell in that... And it's probably... It's good. Maybe it's a superpower. Bad smells... I can all smell the same. They all smell like a chemically kind of smell. They don't smell like the smell they used to, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, every single one has this strange chemical smell to it almost. Um, normal, nice smells are, are normal. I don't know what that is. It's weird. Like I say, maybe it's a superpower. The ability to block out bad smells and just give a chemical smell instead. Um, maybe I could go work in the sewers if this job doesn't um, work out for me. Um, but yeah. I'm sure other people have had uh, much worse side effects than that or after effects. Um, it's just a case of COVID. Ma uh, COVID. Conte. <laughs> calling Conte COVID. I was going to say Conte had, had COVID back in April. It's about him managing the squad now, I guess, uh, and the effects of everything and how it works. Uh, but ultimately, like I say, he seems happy enough. He's a happy man right now. He's in a very good mood. A very good mood. Everyone I know in the club as well has been saying that. He is um, as close to walking around and whistling zippity doo dar as you can possibly get with Antonio Conte. So what else? A little, little housekeeping thing. Kind of transfer stuff. Jed Spence, no movement at all. I asked around about him today before I did this video. No movement on that. Again, I can only stress the weirdest coverage of his transfer ever or maybe potential transfer i think he's not been involved with the pre-season training i can't remember what it was there's something with middlesbrough or maybe they didn't take him somewhere i can't remember uh that's the thing i kind of kept out of that side of it but keeping more on top of things over here um but ultimately no movement but yeah the reporting has been weird i've seen so many advanced talks and agrees fee, uh, fee agreed and all this sort of stuff and no, apparently nothing advanced on that at this moment. Again, by the time you watch this, because um, it, it is, it's going to take a fair few hours to upload, especially over here, the internet's slightly slower than mine at home. Um, and then YouTube has to process it. So you never know by the time this comes out, something might change. But as of this exact point I'm recording this, 
nothing had happened and I'm told no ins or outs close to happening right now. Um, what else? Jules Kunde, I've seen some links with him. I'm told there's no truth in links to him whatsoever for Spurs. Uh, Danny Rose. Danny Rose, was you might have noticed, was playing for Spurs under-21s the other day. Um, they had a friendly the other... Um, sure what day it was i've lost, lost track of days over here but anyway he was he was in there eagle-eyed people noticed him playing i'm told that it's nothing more that he's just training with spurs to get fitness that's all it is um so obviously he had good links with the the under 21s or under 23s as they were back then he did a lot of kind of he, you know played a few with them and, and mentored i think a few of the young guys there so he was i think it was just a favor thing came back to to get some fitness played for them um and yeah, like I say, unfortunately, no transfers right now. Close to be done in or out. Obviously, Giovanni Lo Celso, Tongi Undembele, Harry Winks and Sergio Regan all left at home in order for them to find new deals or their agents too. So hopefully that will happen. But I'm kind of a long lay, unfortunately. That was all a bit of a mess. Just, just the, It was too late to get him a visa. So that was decided for him just to remain at Hotspur Way. Um, and he'll be... Essentially, all of those running things, he'll be doing those back at Hotspur Way. So he should be absolutely, probably shattered, but in a good place for when they come back and be able to then slip straight into the uh, Conte way of doing things when they arrive. I think they fly Sunday, so the time difference they probably like me will also arrive back on Sunday. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, Longley will be involved with that. Obviously, Joe Roden, hopefully if he's better now, will have been training hard as well. Um, and of course we lost Stephen Bergwijn left as I spoke about him probably enough in the last video Jack Clark also gone uh, to Sunderland in a deal that is pretty nominal fee for now but if he were able to do everything all the performance related add-ons could get up to 10 million which actually is more than they bought him for it's a lot of ifs um, but if he does it would be 10 million uh, and yeah yeah, so um, Jack Clark gone. It's such a shame. It was kind of a wasted transfer for him in the end, wasn't it? I mean, look, he's got three loan moves out of it, so he's played for three other clubs during it. It didn't work out. It wasn't a successful move. Of course it wasn't, but I guess he as a player has had plenty of experiences as well, um, but just never really looked like breaking into the squad, unfortunately. So yeah, that's it really. I think I've covered everything I possibly can. Um, like I say, tomorrow is another press conference. Hugo Lloris and Conte, which is 4 o'clock our time, which is 8 o'clock in the morning for you guys. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to head off. I'm going to try tomorrow to get a little bit of free time and actually look around this beautiful city because it is incredible. Apart from the trains that are so loud, they do rattle the walls uh, a little bit. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it's been it's been great fun. Uh, I really would recommend South Korea as a place to come and visit if you can. It's um, how do I describe this? When I went to China and Shanghai on the last tour after Singapore, Shanghai is very much I can imagine being a little bit like whoa, like a bit scary for uh, I guess as Westerners coming out there. You know, there's not a lot in English. Uh, not many of the people that certainly I spoke to could speak English, and it could be a little bit of a a challenge. Um, but I would say in South Korea, there's a lot of speak people that speak English. A lot of the stuff is marked up in English as well. It's very, probably I'd say, built for tourism as well. Um, yeah, it's very cool. It is really very cool. So, yeah, enjoying the tour so far. Like I say, lots of access with Spurs players, which is the, the best thing about a tour. Um, and uh, hopefully lots more to come. And I'm hoping for this sit-down with Conte where we can have a proper chat away from the cameras and get some real insight into what's going on at Spurs. And of course, I will tell you everything that I am told that he says, uh, or he says back to me when I ask him the questions. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to head out now. Uh, going to have my dinner. It is that time. It is quarter to seven at night here. So I'm going to head out and try and get some dinner. Um, yeah, that's a late night. My body clock was completely messed up. Um, I thought I'd done it all perfectly. I deliberately almost stayed awake for two days so that I could fall asleep the first night. And then I'm finding the last three nights in a row I'm pretty much up till about two or three in the morning and then having to sleep till about nine. Uh, and then as soon as I get up, I've got work to do so that I set up morning lines for the next day. Uh, and then all the events start. 
Don't worry. I'm not saying it's a hard life because, yes, I'm very aware that I'm on tour in South Korea with Tottenham Hotspur and it's a very fortunate thing to be doing. But I'd like to think I work hard as well. Uh, so there you go. Right. Anyway, on that weird note, uh, I'm going to head off. Um, the next video probably will be me back in England, I'd imagine. Um, will be yeah early next week, I'd say. Maybe Monday, if I'm not too knackered from the flight back. Um, and we'll have plenty more to talk about. So yeah, in the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe, look after yourselves. And I shall catch you later. Goodbye.